Welcome back to Ta-da! 3D Printing. It's time for me to make some more of these miniature room boxes. These are the 112 scale, which is the larger scale that I sell, and these are made 100% with 3D printing. Usually I print them in multiple different pieces and put them all together. They have an interior baseboard, floor, the windows go all the way through, and this is a working door, so it is hinged and does function. It does move in opens and closes and I use clear either PETG or PLA for the windows or the panes in the windows and the door. The last time I printed this was on the Mark III so I wanted to try it out on the Mark IV and also compare input shaping. So this is how I print it on its back like this and I do use supports. I enable them everywhere as needed and the way that it's positioned like this supports will be in the door and the window on the right. The window on the back doesn't need it. Also, I do want to print with a brim just because I need all the help I can get from warping. The normal speeds on the Mark IV will be about 27 hours, and if I switch to the input shaping, keep everything else the same, still have the brim, still have the supports, it's gonna be about 13 hours, so a little less than half. I need to print more of these because I have actually sold one and I didn't even have another one ready. So I decided that I'm going to print two of them. I'm going to print the input shaping one on the left, the orange one, and then on the right I'm going to print it the normal way. On the one on the left I do have the newer firmware and I do seem to find even with it being updated to the stable firmware, I still get glitches. I clicked print and sometimes I've noticed when I click print it doesn't do anything it just like freezes so I have to reset it so I did that that's giving the one on the right just a little bit of a head start I mean clearly it's going to be much faster on the input shaping one so I get that started again and this time it does look like when I click print it does move on to the next screen so it's doing good these go through their warm-up calibration and look like they're gonna get started okay and then the one on the right loses the filament and I realized that I had been swapping filament to new rolls and I guess I didn't completely load that one so I'm gonna have to restart this one again okay let's skip ahead to where they do finally start printing and of course the one on the left starts printing first and it's moving very fast it's looking good and the one on the right starts going and right away I start feeling like it's not printing very good. The one on the right almost looks like it's like the Z level is too low. It seems like it's just pushing into the bed. It's not leaving a clean line. And I'm really surprised by this because the one on the right does not have the most updated firmware. So I would think if there's any funny glitches from the new firmware that would explain it. But no, it's just printing really terrible. So I just have to stop it and this is what it looks like. And you can see even from far away, it just looks very ripply. It just, it's not working at all. I mean, I can't tell if that's a Z level problem or if that's under extrusion, it just looks terrible. But I really wanna see how it looks when it's done. So I change out my bed. I can't even get that bed clean. I had stopped it, so I just clicked reprint. I didn't go through the whole menu screen. And then it errors out, resets itself completely. And when it reboots, I get a crash detection error. No, I don't want to deal with any crash detection. So I click no, and then I get a red screen. It just completely, I get watchdog reset. So I have to reset it again. So I don't know what is going on with this printer. I have not had this issue before. Um, it's asking if I want to flash. So maybe I have firmware from the minis on this USB. I'm not really sure what it is. I of course say no and I get past the crash detection and I get it printing again. It does go onto the next screen so it looks like it's gonna work for me. It does get printing again and it looks a lot better. It looks like it's a lot smoother. I'm not seeing those funny ripply waves that I was seeing in the other one, but it still seems too squished. And this is a different build plate, so I'm kind of surprised that it's still having the same issue again. It's just looks like it's too 
tight on the bed. It looks like the Z is just too low. So I stop it again. It looks much better, but on the left side, it's still real ripply. And I mean, I'm trying to zoom in a little bit, kind of focus in on this and it, it doesn't look good. That right corner is just, it looks like I changed my Z and I'm still too tight. So I clean this one, at least this comes off of the build plate and I put it back and I'm gonna start it again because I'm just that stubborn and I really want this to start printing. I get the watchdog reset again and I reset it again and it finally gets moving. It starts printing again and this time for whatever reason, it decides that it's gonna print normal. The sensor seems to be working on this. I don't even know how many times I restarted at this point, four or so, and I can leave it. Clearly the one on the other side has been doing a lot better, which is not what I would have expected. I would have thought the input shaper would have been the issue. We finally get past that section where it seemed like it was doing really bad on the last couple prints. It looks really smooth now, so I'm gonna let this play out and see how they compare when they're all done. And here they are both complete from a couple different angles. Okay, so I'm gonna try to compare these in kind of late at night, dark, harsh overhead light. See the difference. This is the input shaper one, and you can see some pretty heavy lines where the door and windows are. I've already popped the supports off. And even below it, it just looks very, um, it looks really rough. Along the bottom, it definitely warped and you can even see a little bit of bulging along the bottom. But yeah, everywhere that the, um, the windows and doors are, there's a, just a real heavy line and it, it doesn't look the best. It definitely could look better. And then this one is the one that I printed normally. Of course, I've removed the brim from both of them. And there is still a line along the bottom, but it's much less obvious. And just overall, it's really, really smooth in comparison. White shows everything. There's a little bit of dirt here and there, but it did much better. So now I wanna see the comparison between the warping. This one on the left is the input shaper. I do see some warping on that one. And then the one on the right is the one that I printed normally. So, I mean, honestly, they look pretty similar on the warping. So that's not too bad. I almost wish that I could do something kind of in the middle. Um, I printed them again. These ones are room boxes that don't have windows and doors. And I pretty much got the same result again of just real heavy lines, roughness on the input shaper and smoother on the regular. Maybe I need to try out a different layer height with input shaping. It's hard to say. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.